Calflora has a database of plants that's very extensive and covers all of California with a particular focus on uh, wildflowers, wild plants. But the database relies heavily on contributions from members. Those contributions include records of sightings of plants that will generally include photos, location, and information about the uh, number of plants and the region where they were found. Calflora can be used by anybody without needing to register or log in, but if you want to start contributing um, observations, you do need to have uh, a login, and that's easy to do. So in this video, we're going to talk about how to log in, which is pretty straightforward, and then how to add observations. When you go to the calflora.org website, you'll see in the upper right-hand corner this login button. If you don't have an account, you'll go down here where it says Make New Account. Click on that, and then all you have to do is provide your name, email address, a password, confirm it. And if you're going to make contributions, be sure to check this box, Register as a Contributor. You'll be asked a little bit about your background and age, and you'll have to agree that you're going to be contributing information that, to the best of your knowledge, is accurate, um, and that you grant permission to have the data used for the public. Once you've done that, You'll be logged in, your name will appear in the upper right. And at this point, you can add observations. So let's do that. You go down to the left where you see Add Observations. Click on this. This page gives you some information about the process, but we're going to walk through it um, because it's relatively straightforward. So we'll go to the link here, Plant Observation Entry, and click on that. To the left is displayed a map of California. Let's assume that we're going to be adding an entry for the Torrey Pines Reserve. So we're going to grab the map and try to position where we think the reserve is, roughly here in the middle of the map, and then zoom in. And here we are. So here is the reserve. Zooming out, you can also see uh, the extension. Now on the left-hand side of the panel, um, you'll be asked the information um, as soon as you click on New Record. So let's go through the process. The organization, um, we're independent. The project will be, in most likelihood, simple data collection. Access by others could be either published, unpublished, or private. But if you want these records to be visible to others, and I suggest you do, then leave it clicked unpublished. History, you can leave blank. Now, this next area here, they want you to locate where the uh, plant or plants were located, and there's several ways of doing this. Probably the easiest is to go to point location, although you can also go to shape, and here the process is going to be very similar to the one you use when you want to define an area for the What Grows Here tool, uh, but let's go to the point location. And here, you can either define a point by clicking here and then clicking on the point of the map, or if you happen to know the coordinates, uh, decimal latitude and longitude, you can enter those. So for this example, we're going to be using um, a photo. This is Heterotheca sessiliflora, uh, also known as false golden aster, which was found in the extension. And uh, this file, which is the photo, if you, on the Mac, call up the information, you'll see it has the latitude and the longitude encoded, geotagged, from the camera. So in this case, we actually know the, uh, the coordinates. So I'm going to click here, latitude and longitude. So now we're going to enter the latitude and longitude. And the easiest way to do that is simply click on the latitude and longitude from the information, copy it, go over here, paste it in, do the same thing for longitude. Be sure you get the minus sign. Otherwise, I think you end up in China someplace. And apply. And uh, if you notice now on the right, the marker shows you where it thinks it is. I'm going to zoom in and confirm that that is, in fact, where this photo was taken. I'll go to satellite view because it will be easier for me to recognize the location. In fact, it is. 
There was a stand of false golden aster to the east side of the Marcenic Trail, right about here north of this uh, concrete dam. And so that looks to be right. So I'm going to close there on point location. Scientific name, I will enter now. Uh, Enterthica sessiliflora. And you'll notice that there's immediately a number of um, options that come up. False golden aster, which is Heterothecus sessiliflora subspecies sessiliflora, so I'll click on that. It fills in the common name. Uh, it knows I'm the observer because I'm logged in. The observation date is today, but the file name actually has the observation date of August 21st, 2016. So I'm going to fill in 2016 2021. Uh, in location description, I'll give a verbal description. Um, Number of plants there were uh, between 20 and 50, so I'll click there. There is a photo, I'm going to add the photo, and I will upload from my computer. When uploading is complete, you'll see a thumbnail of your photo, and then we'll complete the remaining questions. Management status this is under management, it's part of the state park system. Natural status is it's wild, uh, region. We'll leave as any. Collection survey there. This is not part of a survey. The ownership is part of the state government. Uh, there's no option for the California State Park System. So that's the closest we can get. Uh, plan identification. This was actually verified by an expert. Otherwise, um, if you are yourself familiar with it, uh, you can say recognized from prior determination, or you could leave it uncertain. I'm going to say confirmed by an expert. Um, the elevation, uh, we're going to leave blank for the moment. Gross area is, uh, I think in square feet, was about 300 square feet, I believe. And I think that's complete. So we'll then go back to the top and we'll say save. It tells me that the observation has been saved um, as record P027751. Thank you for the contribution. If you want to go back now to CalFlora, the main site, go to My Observations, uh, you should see your record here. In this case, uh, I entered it. And if we click on that ID, we see, in fact, that the record has been correctly entered. So. That's the way to enter an observation via the website. There is a second way, which in fact is easier and has just been made available by CalFlora. That's to use a new mobile app that they've developed. Go to the main website, calflora.org. Click on Phone Applications. You'll see that there are two versions, one for Android, the other for iPhone. You'll get them through the normal means, the Google Play Store in the case of Android, the uh, Apple App Store in the case of iPhone. These are pretty user-friendly and uh, I don't think it's going to be necessary to show how to use them, but the main point is that you can use the camera in your smartphone to take a photo. Most smartphones uh, that have GPS, and they virtually all do, will geotag the photo for you so the location will be recorded. The app allows you then to upload the photo to the CalFlora website. There you'll go through a process that's somewhat similar to the one we just went through, although it's a bit more user-friendly. Uh, again, as with the website, you do need to be registered. But other than that, uh, it's a nice way to be able to record observations and upload them on the fly. The point of all of this is to contribute to a database that's widely used and to enrich the database 
uh, especially in the reserve, for future visitors and docents. So enjoy.